Hey guys, this is Zach here, and I'm going to work on my G36C. Just to show kind of, we're going to get to a compression test and just to kind of show how to open this up. I don't have very much time today, so we're going to get started with the Ares G36C, one of the most beautiful guns to own. Um, there's a lot of reasons for that. We've got the unjamming ability down here, this button right here. It also locks the charging handle. And to uncharge, simply pull back, let go. Um, it's a beautiful gun overall because it's easy to assemble, so we're going to go ahead and do that. And we're going to get to the gearbox for this test just to show somebody how to properly do this. First thing we're going to do is take out the uh, pins necessary for this front pin. If you're like me and you've got a custom front, you may have to turn your your uh, flash hider. Battery's still in here. We were playing with it last, didn't take the battery out. Of course, I've always got to do that myself. I let a lot of people borrow my stuff, so um, don't ask to borrow, because I will say no. It's only close friends and relatives, so take out that pin, take this out, take out this back pin right here. Keep your, all your pins together, all parts together. Open up the back, pull this out. Now, go ahead and lock this so we have easy access to the actual gun itself, the gearbox. Alright, from this angle, what you're going to do is flip the gun upside down and carefully start to remove it. You will have to make sure no wires get caught and so forth. So I usually go not too fast because once you get wires caught you can actually uh, clip a wire or um, tear it depending on if it's touching something sharp or not. See, It's, it's coming out, you just got to give it some time. Push down with the wires. Pull this wire out and bam! There's the gearbox. See, that was very easy to do. You can see there's a little bit of clipping here at the top. Cause like I said, you want to be careful when you put that in and out. Um, but it's got some nice heat shrink on it, so I wouldn't even worry about that. This gun's been working for quite a while. I haven't had any issues since I last tuned it, which was a couple months back. So, um, and usually what I like to do is look through the inner barrel make sure we have nothing uh, inside there I don't know if you can see very well because but I usually look down the inner barrel and the inner barrel is clean I don't see anything in there hop up looks good gun looks good overall so um, on the taking it apart looks good overall I don't mean the gun overall since we've been inside alright so here's the top for the blowback we are going to get in to do a compression test. So the first things we need to do is remove this bottom pistol grip piece right here so we can get into the gearbox. And we will need the proper screwdriver for this. There's so many on hand, it's ridiculous. Um, let's go ahead and remove um, the one you want to remove that keeps, this is a version three gearbox. So you only really have to remove this screw right here. It keeps the motor, or at least this version 3 of Ares G36C, or G36 in general, it can be any G36 of Ares, the motor is screwed onto this plate. Um, it's a pretty good idea, it keeps it stiff, that motor can't go anywhere. And then there is a screw right here, hole that adjusts the motor, don't need to, it's already adjusted properly. But we're going to go ahead and start to take this out, we need to remove a pin, and when removing a pin, I usually suggest having your own remove pin set. The reason being because 
<clears throat> no one cares about this table. This is my work on table. So even if I hit a little bit of wood, I don't even care anymore. But the reason I say have a pin set is because you can leave marks in your pen. And if you want it to look perfect, just have a nice pin set. Easy to push it. All right. So we got to this part. Now to remove this out, have to uh, adjust the selector switches from left and right. They pretty much move together if you've got them set up properly. Um, but I move it all the way down to automatic and I start to lift it up very slowly. You've got to make some clearance here. Should start to come up. You don't want to force it. Just go real slow until you see what your problem could be. All right, now when we get to this point, you see how this is kind of hooked in here? So you have to pull it away, unhook it, and there we go, bam. Now they shrink wrap the motor here. They're really trying to keep that motor from moving. Um, it's very brilliant design. Uh, the clips on the bottom of this are not coming off. You can see that the motor connectors are on there. Good. So Aries knows what they're doing. However, I've heard that we've had problems with this motor. I've seen it spark a little too much too myself. There was some dirt inside the pistol grip that just came out. Got all over my hands too. Um, probably from shooting a lot. But uh, let's go ahead and get to the next step is checking your bushings. Now what I mean by that is you look to see here there's nothing, no discoloration, no black, no grease. On the other side, got a little bit right here, got a little bit right here, and none right here. Now what this could mean is this could just be some dirt, but from my experience, and I already shimmed this before, it should be working fine. There could be some wear and tear and whatnot, but we'll check it in a second. Um, if it doesn't have anything black, then what that means is that grease didn't come up against it and it was shimmed very well right there. So the sector gear right here doesn't have anything wrong. It looks like on this side it doesn't have anything wrong, but if it was shimmed improperly, should have done it to, uh, to either side the way it's propped. But it only did to this side, so from right now what I conclude is probably dirt some of that grease falling down in there, but we'll go ahead and open it up and check and see. To open this up, it's pretty simple. It's on the other side. You look at your gearbox this way. There's the screws. And we have what's called right here. I need to pop this out. This holds the wires for you. Oh, don't lose your parts. If you need to, bring a little plastic bag. It helps to not lose them. Unscrew the motor first. Pretty simple to do. Again, don't lose the pieces, guys. Guys and gal gals and girls. <laughs> guys and then gals and girls, the same thing for girls. Guys and gals, there we go. That's what I need to say better. If you ever want to have a gun that has really few problems, this is what you go for because it's easy to diagnose anything. Alright, check for any more cuts. Nope, all good. Now, look at it. And the inside looks very well good. Yeah, see it was shimmed perfectly because when I push this up, the bevel gear goes up just slightly, just the lightest amount that you really can't see it. Um, that's what you're supposed to have because when you push the motor, you can see right where that mark is that it's imperfectly shimmed from the motor to the uh, to the um, excuse me the pinion gear right here. It's on the motor to the bevel gear. Okay. So let's go ahead and take the rest of this off. So I'm very certain that this. When I shimmed this last time, it was perfect, and I'm sure it's still perfect. There's enough proof right there. 
All right, so let's go ahead and get the rest of this off here. And before I get down to the last few spring, uh, excuse me, screws, this gearbox I really like because you don't even have, you didn't have to do all these screws first, but I like to do these first because I'm already on the way there. It's out of the way. Um, the back has a screw for the spring, which is a very clever and beautiful system. Some of the new gearboxes for 2011, or excuse me, 2012, are going to have um, pop in and pop out easily springs. This is something that's kind of necessary. But you go ahead and you unscrew that. Big spring there. And now there's a hex to pull out the spring very easily. Need the proper hex tool for this. Usually what I do is I get this set because then I don't have to worry about making a mess. Let's see if it fits in here. like it fits but only this way so I need something to lock that I don't think they give me something to start with this side yeah, I don't see anything to lock from this side I don't think they intend you to use that and I don't think I'll be able to get it with that side. This definitely does not fit. The only hex that is going to fit is this one. Nope. None of these fit. reason is this will fit. Yeah, this will fit. But the reason is is that none of these work for the back way. It'd be upside down, so that's why they won't fit at the end. So let's go ahead and uh, put this off to the side. I don't want to spend too much time putting everything back away. It's pretty simple for me to do. Bam. Okay. Put this back. Find a really big hex screw that you need here. Here we go. Should have just done that. <laughs> ah. All right. Pull up that spring. Bam. There you go. The spring guide's there. Now let's go ahead and unscrew the rest. Now there's no spring to pop out other than the ones to the trigger. So what you want to do is be careful. Not to have them flinging at you. Anything that is different, screws that are different, you should put them in a different pile, put them in a different bag, whatever you're doing. Because sometimes they're different size, different length, and they are in this case, so and put these off to the side. That way I know they don't go together with that piece. It's a smart thing to do. Okay, we're almost in the gearbox. Now this one's got a hex bolt on the other side so you kind of need to hold it see how I use the magnet of the screwdriver to pull it out for me you gotta think smart like that 
All right, got those out. And I tried not to get that piece falling in there. There's the other piece, and then here's the bolt. There we go, now we can pull off this top piece. And the way that went in before was like this, in case we have any questions of somebody working on this type of gun. It goes in this way. This is where the pit back of the piston hits. See? Okay. Last time. Alright. I think that's everything. We're going to go ahead and prop it off. Just take it off very slowly. Keep your hand pushing down on the trigger. I believe that's everything unscrewed. I'm just looking. Alright, go ahead and take it off. Now the trigger might come flinging out, but it's okay because you're going to put it back together, right? Push down on your bushings if they get caught. Use a screwdriver to just tap it. It should come straight up. Oh, gotta forget. I can't forget that this piece has to come out first. This plate is not necessary, but I don't even know why I keep it. Other people just don't give a crap about it. Where's the screwdriver? Pop this thing out. There's the plastic little plate that covers the uh, wheel. Everything looks good. Let's go ahead and do some tests. Let's pull this up very slowly. You can unhook the uh, pliers at the front by this huh, the uh, tappet plate. There's a little spring. You can pull this up with your pliers. That way it doesn't come flinging at you. Don't lose the spring. You will need it, trust me. Usually if something is needed, or something's made with the gun, it's usually needed, necessary. All right, so we're gonna do a little compression test. Here's how you do it. Put your hand, your finger right here, hold it kind of tight, and from the other side, push up with the piston. If it has a lot of resistance, you got a really good Mine is not making it as easily. Ooh, I knew that it should have not made it at all. Uh, the end of the piston is chipped right here. You can see that. That's why I check every once in a while on the inside of my guns because there might be some issue. So, where is that piece? Did it fling out? Because I do not see it. Um. It looks like it's inside here. It looks like I need a long, long tool for this. I don't want to mess up my feeding of it. Very careful not to um, scratch. You really don't want to scratch it bad. I'm just going to take it off this way. Yeah, see, there it is. It's already kind of scratched it. It should be okay though. There's a piece of the piston right there. So we know that's from regular use. Um, there's a little bit of an indention in the cut, the sorbo right, here. right there, the sorbo. And then uh, we can see the piston has a little crack in it, or not crack, a piece broken off, and it looks like the rest of the piston is about to crack and break off. So you need a new cylinder head right here. Um, luckily, I have one for my G and G, so I can replace that very easily, which might make this game, this gun, even more beefy. 
Um, people might hate it then in that case. Usually you need a paper towel from this point because there's so much grease on my hands. Get that grease off your hands. Don't want to get all over the screwdrivers. Everything. All right. So what do we do here? Um, everything else looks good. We're going to go ahead and take this piston head off and complete the mission to show that that's a little broken up. You can see the grease on it is really well. Check the teeth while you're inside. Teeth are good. Just that four piston heads in trouble. Um, the rest of the stuff inside looks good. It looks really good. So, uh, other than we've got the anti-reversal latch came off a little bit. I'll put it back on later. Let's take, just check the shimming while we're here. Yeah, see that's perfect. When you can spin quietly, you see it spin I uh, very little effort. It spins real quietly. It's perfectly shim. Now that little rattle at the end, if this was completely closed, it'd hold these perfectly centered. It eventually gets so much speed it kind of loses its uh, centering of it. I, get, I don't know how to best say that. But it's basically perfectly shimmed. So I don't have to worry about that because I've pre-shimmed it before. Um, show shimming jobs, you can watch that from other videos and I'll probably make a video for it just for the hell of it. Uh, but let's get to the real problem here. I was going to do a compression test when I found out that I knew some of the compression was leaking and the piston is broken. So let's go ahead and get that open. Check the teeth again. We're good on the teeth. Start screwing the top of this. Be very gentle. If you can't do it, don't strip the screw. You need a bigger screwdriver. This might be too big. this perfect screwdriver. Take your piston, hold it tightly, and screw it. This is why a metal piston head is better than plastic. People are going to say, well, it needs to weigh less to get higher FPS. I'd have rather a more reliable gun than higher FPS. Higher FPS is pretty ridiculous when we're talking 5 to 10 FPS. People don't want to People don't want to talk about that, but sure enough, we've got to. All right. So this should come right off. And it looks like I can replace it no problem. that down and there is no looks like they just screwed it in that's all they did usually there's other stuff on the inside but it doesn't look I don't know that metal if you're gonna push something be very gentle and those, I think this piston's in perfect, uh, perfectly good shape. Here we go. This is what they had in there previously. You could keep this, and that gives weight to the front of it. Yeah, that's pretty beefy in metal too. That is beefy in metal. They knew what they're doing on that piece. Um, let's go ahead and dry off my hands real quick. And then grab the other cylinder head. This is why I like to keep my parts, no matter what gun it came from, because then I'd have to buy a new cylinder head when this one was really good. Alright, look at this beautiful cylinder head. We're going to take that out. 
Here's my other stuff that's necessary for working inside. Let's go ahead and grab that. All right, let's look at this O-ring too. Is it in good shape? O-ring looks in good shape, so I'm gonna put it back on. Let's grab the piston here. Let's line this up. This looks pretty beautiful. Now, the question is, can we get this to work? Trying to line it up. I almost had it. Maybe I should just use what they gave me on this other cylinder head. Alright, here's the parts that they had on the VFC one. This piece, this piece. And this. That's all they had. See there's no screw in the front, which might be even beefier. Um, there's only a screw in the back. Let's do that. It'll be easier. So I want to line it up. Get all lined it up here. Make sure it's on there good. Now I know this isn't me, but maybe somebody else will agree with me here. With a ruler it could be very precise. But there is a little bit of height right here to this, this metal shaft that comes across here. It's a little bit of height right here. And it starts to get straight here where it's less it's narrow. If you were to compare these two lengths, this would be bigger which is almost like when you're looking at it it looks like it's getting crushed together at the end I don't know if someone cut the metal wrong and then they just slammed it in there or what but it's definitely noticeable up close and personal so um, let me see if you, if you want to see that in the camera this metal right here is wider and it gets thinner as it gets to here and the plastic looks like it's breaking back um, if the piston fails oh well I just have to go to a new piston but it definitely doesn't look very good. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and first use another paper towel. Poor piston's going to be fixed. It's almost like a destiny thing that this was supposed to happen to this one. And then I switch it out. Tell you this gun will be happy to shoot though with a new piston head instead of a broken one. Okay, it should be getting tight. Except it's not getting tight. If it's not getting tight. There we go. Got tight. Let's see, if it's not getting tight, it's not all the way down there. I could try by pulling that piston head off a little bit. No, it ain't coming off. It's on there good. It means you did a good job. Definitely want to make sure it's on there. You don't screw it on all the way and you put it together, you're going to be very upset. All right, because then you have to take it all apart. Let's go ahead and close this up. And we're going to try this again. Where is the air nozzle right here? Put the air nozzle up the right way. The way you'll know is when you put the tap up plate on. And see which way the air nozzle should be. Should the cylinder head should be flush with the rubber right here. So right up against it. And you can see I have the 
is the air nozzle on correctly now. And you don't need the tap up plate for this test. Basically, now you hold the front end again with the air nozzle and just push. There is no compression. See how fast I can do that and easy? It's probably because the O ring is slightly smaller. How crappy is that? Well, I have a thing for that when this happens. This O ring is in good condition, so you don't want to break it. So be very careful, take it out, use it for something else. All right, so it's slightly smaller. Just go ahead and take the other O-ring. Make sure it's in good condition. It looks in great condition. It looks in very good condition. It should work now. Yep. You can hear when I push it really hard. It doesn't want to budge. It's perfect. And you can see right here. It's in there good. This is a very good compression test. Um, it's very tight. So now the gun probably even shoots better FPS with a new cylinder head like this, this beefy one. It could be less depending on the weight to the piston, but at least it's beefy and fixed. And before we'd had a, we would have lost compression regardless right here. Um, so let's go ahead and put that to the side. So we're all good, set. Um, let's get some new cylinder grease going in there. Because we are done with that. And later on I will make a video on the other stuff. Some cylinder grease going on here. So the cylinder will be even better through here. And what you want to do is just ply a little bit all the way around. And I mean a little bit. Like drop, not everywhere, just a little bit of here or there. And then take your piston, I like looking everywhere except where it's supposed to be, and go back and forth. Yeah, that is beefy. thing is going to shoot like a friggin' beast. Alright. Good to go. Okay, that's pretty much it for this part of the video. I'm going to put it back in and show you how to do it. Um, if the center reversal last lap, enter reversal latch keeps coming up, what you need to do, also we need to be in the starting position of an EEG, is no teeth at the top. Completely covered. Take out your bevel gear, put back in this. Now you may ask what this is used for. This is to keep the bevel gear from going backwards. Yes, backwards. Good thing I like about this gearbox, they lock the latch in for you. How awesome is that? And a lot of gearboxes do not do that. Put this gear down in there. So, I mean, it stays in there very easily. Um, good reasons to buy this gun, guys. All right, so, it has a lot of beautiful reasons. So we're all set with that. Let's go ahead and move to the next thing. Um, take my stuff slowly. We don't need the spring. We need to pop this in and check the angle of engagement. Now to do this, you put the gear in, or excuse me, the piston goes in, and you uh, watch the gear come up. So you spin it while well, the piston's all the way forward. Now, 
Does it grab it? Yes, it does. And you can watch it take it. Usually what I have to do is, oops. Usually what I have to do is hold it because this wire behind, in the back of this gearbox gets to be in the way sometimes. All right, so you hold it. Yep, it starts to take it. Now the enter reversal latch popped out. So if it starts to take it, that means, let me take the enter reversal latch out. That means it's making its way. See, look. Look at that. The piston is going perfectly fine. I'm watching it. The teeth are aligned perfectly. So sector gear is perfect against it. Watch for takeoff. Takeoff is perfect. Yep. Bam. So, go ahead and uh, put this in. Well, let me talk about this compression again, just for a second. All right, so if we had poor compression, we know check the O-ring, maybe it needs a new type. I didn't put that on there. Um, there's also an O-ring sometimes on the air nozzle. In this case, there is not. Air nozzle's getting a little bit yellow from this brass, it looks like. I don't think it's copper. What you want to do is put a tad bit of this stuff, getting it on me. Just put a drop in here. You want to put a tad bit of it in here and get it all around in the uh, thing because this thing goes back and forth. Got some on me, so I'll just rub it on there. I think I put enough. There we go. All right, and uh, I'll dry my hand again. stuff on me. Alright, let's go ahead and put that there. I don't need to grease up the gears. Uh, make sure that the thing aligns properly. It's aligned with the teeth and this, so that's all good to go. This trigger needs to be aligned here. So we can see it touching the micro switch. Yep. Yep, everything's good to go there. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and close it back up and we're gonna have a working badass gun. So we're gonna take this off, put this up here, and I'm gonna show you how to close it up for all those people who have a hard time closing something like this. If the anti reversal latch keeps moving, remember, put a little bit of that white lithium grease, I think it's called. This white stuff right here. Uh, just put some gear grease. I think it's called lithium. I don't buy the huge pack. A lot of people do. And lithium is a battery type. It's like lithium something. I always put the wrong words and everything I say, even though I'm trying to mean the best. All right. Just look it up. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> Sick of trying to remember what it exactly is called. Okay. Go ahead and put this in here. All right, never mind. Let's not use that. I don't need to. I'm just taking this a version two gearbox. All right, I think that's everything that is necessary, except the tap up plate. Notice I have a checklist in my head. There's no tap up plate. What are we doing? Make sure the air nozzle latches on. Usually you hear a click. I need to pull this up a little bit. Because it's gotta grab that. It's gotta grab that tap up plate. Take the piston out again. It's gotta grab that tap up plate and go forward with it. And I'm not seeing it click, so I'm gonna push it on there myself. Alright. 
There's enough grease there still, so I don't need to worry about grease on the piston. Let's go ahead and set this down in there. Now, when you're closing a gearbox that does have a spring right here, you should hold down on the cylinder um, until you get it closed. This one is lovely. We don't have to worry about that crap. All right, we do need the tap up plate spring, which I am looking for right here. And oh, pliers. Okay. Basically, this can go on any way as long as it pulls the tap up plate forward and doesn't come undone. Usually, I put it this way with the spring up at the back so that it's pulling the tap of plate upwards to the location. What happens is the spring can never really come undone that way. It's a smart thing to do, just do it that way. <clears throat> you don't want that thing popping off and then you're going to be spitting out some cuss words about why the heck mirror gun's not working properly all of a sudden. And when you open it up you'll find the spring not attached and you'll go, what the hell? It will be exactly what I said. So, just take advice when, you, when necessary. Smart people do. I think I'm going to hook this with my hand. And then, now hook it to the front here. This can be a little tricky. Sometimes I don't grab the front of the spring, I grab the side of it. And push down with your hand, hold the top from it coming undone, and bam, it's in there. Make sure that this tap of plate is underneath the bushing, guys. See, I was trying to push that bushing up. We can just hold on tap of plate. I need to check and see if the trigger is working properly. This is not the proper spot. Now it is. You want to make sure that you will be pissed off that that's not working. All right, go ahead and just start putting it together. Check the interversal latch. Everything's good. Yeah, that tap of plate is trying to become a pain. Oh, there is one thing you will have to be very careful of. It's the spring right here on this gun because it has the uh, the button to decrease your uh, excuse me decompress your springs and then your gears come out so from locking down so you need to make sure that this spring is on there tight and, and you get it up in there correctly with this gun so we're gonna. What you want to do is push the spring down like this, downwards, and then bring your gearbox up into it. Now, when you get to this point, the gearbox, check your spring first. Okay, gearbox might not close because you don't have all these bushings uh, touching properly. So what you want to do is get a very small tool and kind of just push them into each other. Also make sure your spring is in there correctly. It's not yet. Push your um, front tap of plate a little bit in and just keep kind of slowly going until you get it to lock in. Sometimes it locks in right away. Sometimes it takes a little bit of kick and I can't kick it. I'm just kidding about the kick part. but. Um, yeah, that piece doesn't want to hold my trigger until I can push the front. Just got to kind of play with it so you can get it on there. One step closer. One step closer for mankind. There's the trigger. I got the trigger in. I gotta get that front. And it looks
looks locked in, guys. Usually you hear a last snap, but I don't think I'm going to hear a last snap. Because I'm not even holding it tight, and it's closed everywhere. It's literally closed everywhere. Good thing about this is you can check your piston, easily see it, and it is closed. Now to check everything before I really close it. Spring on this works. Trigger works. It's hitting that blue button. Piston goes back. So um, you can try to spin the gears a little bit. Gear spin. It should spin forward, not backwards, because that anti reversal latch will lock it. So that's perfect. Um, go ahead and start screwing it in. Let's get it done. Okay, we're down to the final stretch. I got it screwed in. Now, if you have the same gun right here, and you're pulling the trigger, let me unplug this real quick, just so I can show for anybody that might have this issue. If you're pulling the trigger, and it's not touching the blue, blue clip inside that powers it, that's that microchip, if it's not touching it, what's happening is you got a safety on this side, there's this thing that goes up and down. So if you pull, if you were to pull this this way towards me, it will cause this thing to go downwards and not hit the button. But you just want to push it upwards like this. See how it's up now? You could hear, you could hear the, the trigger get hit a little bit when I did that. So it's upwards a little bit now. So now you can see it actually hit the blue clip inside. Actually, excuse me, that's on safety. You can see it's not hitting the blue clip. See, right here. Right here. It's not hitting that blue clip all the way. So you push that up again. And this is full automatic mode right now. See, now it's hitting it. See right here, it goes all the way forward. Now, we're going to go ahead and uh, push that down a little bit. I'm going to push, I'm gonna push it up a little bit. Right there, so I can do full automatic real quick. All right, now we hook it up, give it some power, and we hear the thing go. This thing sounds badass. Here's how we check. Oh yeah, and this battery's used, so it's probably even way better with a brand new battery. Wow, that's got some compression, dude. Watch my hand. I don't know if you can see that very well. The skin actually gets moved quite a bit. But yeah, it's got some compression. Just look at that. Bam! You can hear how loud that thing hits right into the end of it. Alright, let's see if we can get some full automatic going. Push this forward and back. Just hold that. You can hear the battery about to die. So, uh, plus it smells a little bit. I swear that motor always smells. If you watch my previous videos, you see that the sparking down here actually smokes at the very bottom out of here. Um, I've got another motor to replace it, but I'm just going to wait until it dies. So let's go ahead and run it back in semi. And uh, let's unhook this here. Poof, freaking stinks. But uh, yeah, you can see that thing was freakishly powerful. Um, it's ready to just totally womp up on the field. Hopefully, hopefully the Sorbo in there doesn't get destroyed. Or the front of that cylinder head, because that piston head is now just 
bam, hitting it real hard because it's a little bit heavy metal. But yeah, this thing is going to be a beast on the field. Someone's going to be excited about that. So you saw how I did it. It's pretty simple, just a little long. Um, if you don't know how to shim your gears properly, you're going to have some other issues. But we'll get into a video about that sometime. Uh, for now, that's how you do a compression test. Um, another thing to know is that your hop-up at the end has a hole near the inner barrel. Um, what it's supposed to do is the hop-up is supposed to go right up against this. It's supposed to ride up right up against this. Now there's a hole right here inside here. The hop-up is supposed to seal that. It's supposed to come in and go and lock right into it. Boom. So that when you pull that trigger, the air can only go straight through and you launch your BB. So this needs to be locked down right here too. Um, that's why I've always said, you know, check to see if your hop-up goes right into it. And I go ahead and put this down. We can see that this right here on this gearbox, you can see right here that the air nozzle is right there and it doesn't go fully in there. So there's going to be a little bit of compression loss um, even if this goes a little bit forward and gets in there. Even if the air nozzle goes a little bit forward and gets in there, there's still going to be a little bit of compression loss, but there's not going to be a lot. Um, it's just on the design of it. Uh, the other ones, they fit right onto it, which is great. There's nowhere that air can go, even though I bet you this is really going to be still pretty good compression uh, because it's going to grab that BB and lock on that air nozzle. There's a lot of suction and a lot of uh, air coming out. So either way, it's still going to shoot very well. Um, one thing you could do is get a really long air nozzle. You don't want too long. But I think what I would do instead is just asphyxiate this somehow with electrical tape around here so that there's an air seal. It's just an easier way. can't really make something that goes around there in plastic because I can't design anything in plastic to be cut. It would be expensive. Um, but let's go ahead and put this in here real quick. Just to show how to do it, but get together again. So we're gonna get this in there. Make sure you got the tr trigger. Oh, by the way, I did put that clip back in right here. That black clip. I put that back in there. So we we'll show the gear. And then we're gonna lift this up, clear it, get it in there. Pin, the pin's in there. Oh, I almost forgot. See, yeah, I have a checklist. I thought about that again. I went, wait a minute. This can move on me. I need this piece again. And it needs to probably come in through this side and pull that wire. Let's see that. Pull that wire. Now it is not locking in. So what I'm assuming is it's not in all the way. There we go. It locked. Push it down with the screwdriver a little bit more. Just to make sure it's in there. It's in there and it grabbed the two wires. Bam. Let's see now. Now we're all good. That'll help get it in there easier. So the end here. Bring it down, bring it, bring it up, got it in, make sure you have clearance on this side, this is where, this is where it's going to go is right here, where that little indention is that goes up and down, and on the other side, here's the piece right here, this black piece has to go in the indention of this turning, here I'll get it in there first and then I'll show you. So first off I'm putting it I'm moving this black thing over. See, I'm moving. I'm moving it back here. And then I'm trying to set it up in between. And you can check it. It's 
all good to go. Close it up there. All right. And I just got to find the other piece, the pin. Now, if you remember, I pushed the pin downwards like this. So the end that's bigger, you want to put on the other side. And I don't think you can tell which side is bigger on this. Usually you can tell when you try to put it in, it won't go in. There you go. That's definitely not a good way to check your pin is just try to move it with your hands. It's in there, good. All right. Um, now we got that set up. Let's screw the bottom up. Get that in there. It's definitely not going in because it's probably not aligned properly. It is now. I looked at the hole, it was a little bit offline, but I moved it with the screw. And then, um, let's see here, we'll take these pieces, set them aside. Now I usually keep my previous pieces even though they're broken, so in case there is something unique, I know when I look back at it, hey, you know what, this piston's not going to work because of that problem, or this piston head, I don't know why I keep calling that cylinder head, um, stupid things. I noticed during my video editing, and then I had to video this in because I had to erase some of it, I had too long of recording footage. Alright, so we got everything set up, let's go ahead and prop this back in, I think, and just double checking. I know I did all the screws, I did that, I did that, I did that, and I did that, okay. So, push your wires down, in place. Make sure to have clearance. You want clearance. Okay. Now watch your air nozzle right here. Air nozzle has to be very careful to go into that inner barrel. Do not want to break it, crack it. See the hop up, hop up comes back a little bit. Just pull it a little bit. There you go. Now adjust the barrel. So it's up against the hop up. Good. It's up against it. All right. Yeah, that hop up barely goes far enough forward to shoot BB. That's why I won't get the best compression. I mean, the only way I can see this actually working the way it should to make it even better compression is you carve off some of this area right here so that this can come further closer this way. Um, although that would cause a problem because your BBs get loaded up right here. So I would probably use tape, something right here. Uh, just to create a better seal. I'm not going to mess with it because I can't shoot outside right now. And if I'm going to mess with something like that, I don't want to see a difference in FPS. So I'm not going to worry about it. Um, pull this forward. All right, now that you've got that in, go ahead and put this in. Make sure you've got it in there right. You know how you can test. Pull it back. It's working. Okay, go ahead and lock the back. The back one. There we go. It's locked. And the back stock's good to go. Alright, here you want to be careful and guard your wire under so it doesn't get hit by your magazine when you prop it in there. <sighs> okay. See there? Now it definitely cannot get hit. Go ahead and start closing up this baby. Alright, next thing. Yep, it doesn't hit. Perfect. 
I know it hits, doesn't hit because I've done so many taking it apart, putting it back together. I can't get it wrong, really. Right, this part can be a little tricky. You have to look at the hole a little bit and match it up. It doesn't help when you don't have any light. Okay. There we go. Then the front. Turn my front. Uh, turn my front flash hider. God, what is up with these names? I can't remember. Today I just must be lacking sleep. Maybe that's it. I don't know. All right. Should be all set to go. Let's see if I can lock it. I check everything. I don't think the spring is getting in there correctly for the back. Definitely is not. Yeah, here's what's happening. Remember that hop up? That, or excuse me, not hop up, that, uh, blowback piece needs to be behind this piece so it's not so we can't push that we need to push the gearbox down a little bit so I've got to re-pop these open a little bit just these two need to be alright lift the gearbox up a little bit so I can pass it lock. Now it should be working. Yes. Now it's working. So I passed it properly. Alright, so put this back on. The thing about opening a gun is you want to make sure everything you touched is working again. So that's a must for my opinion. Not just opinion. It's a definite. Yeah, see now it comes all the way back. Put this in there. Yep works now because see it's locked. Go ahead and lock this up. Bam! Ready to go. Hit the field. Access to everything. Hop up's in good condition. Yep. Selector switch is working. Can't pull the trigger on safety. Semi-auto. Everything is beautiful, and just because you want to make sure again that your gun is working while it's out there on the field, why not just test the last part? <sighs> this battery is about dead. Let's get a bigger battery. Just because I'm not gonna, like I say, it didn't work. Ah, oh, here we go. Yeah. Too bad this don't fit, huh? Oh shoot. I need big to small. The only big to small is in my VFC scar. Alright. Alright. Let's get this going. I'm 
We'll have to switch these to Dean's pretty soon. I just haven't spent any money to buy Dean's connectors yet. So I'm getting sick of these Tamiya connectors. Keep popping out and breaking from time to time. Alright, here we go in the video so you can see. Full auto. Jesus. Uh, yeah. And the pistons all the way forward. Uh oh. I think we got a jam after that. That was so beautiful. That was such beautiful action, dude. <laughs> it's right when I stopped. I think we got a jam, is what we did. The only way to check and see if you got a real, real jam. I'm pushing this and I don't hear the gears going back, so it should work. Let's plug it back in. Plug it back in. Nope. Alright, pull up the 12 volt, which I don't have powered. Seems when I use this battery that I get jams pretty often. And it's just that battery, it's an 8.4. I probably need to be using 9.6s, but this one over here is an 8.42. Unless we got a dead battery problem. I'm getting sick of finding dead battery problems. No. I have to be careful, because there's no uh there's no fuse on this gun, you could break your motor. You don't stop shooting when you're supposed to. Anyways, uh, we saw it was working very well, so I think what happened is the motor is stuck in a high position. You can't pull the spring back, and I need to use a 12 volt to probably overpower it. That or something broke. But uh, it was working great right off the start. Um, you know what? I really like to make sure it's working. Let's get 12 volt. This thing's not even fully charged. But I think it'll work. No. That's uh, not good. Well, you know what that means. Take it back apart and see what's wrong. I'll pause and figure it out real quick. Okay guys, I just got done charging my 12 volt. It's been a couple hours um, fully just because I was very sure I didn't take apart the gearbox. I just got down to this point and I looked inside and you can see the piston is all the way at the front so that means that the only way the motor would not go is either one doesn't have juice or two it's stuck. Stuck from gears being unshimmed for some reason maybe a shim broke or something but I have confidence that the reason it's not working is because my batteries are dead and this new 12 volt I think is going to make it work and we're in business so I think I already have this perfectly ready to go I think I just had a dead battery problem let's go ahead and find out if I'm right because I'm very positive I am holy sheesh Woo! I think I think we gotta see that in uh, on the camera what do you have got? We've got to see that on the camera, dude. That was crazy. That was freakishly crazy. Okay, we got to put the gun back together. That was so freakishly crazy. Um, I'll show it again. From I mean, you could hear how freakishly powerful that was. Damn. 
Damn, damn. That's all I gotta say. It's not all the way forward after that. Oh, there we go. See, I love this function, dude. Such a badass gun. Okay. Um, I know the gun's working. I really don't need to test it anymore. I'm just gonna put it back together again for a final time. This time, make sure this is all the way back so I can get the gearbox on top of it. Yeah, that thing sounded crazy. I hope my sister's dog doesn't start barking like a crazy dog that it is. Don't have to shoot it with this gun, right? Let's just take this out much easier, I think. Alright, why aren't you going down there? Oh. It goes in after I do something right, huh? Alright, make sure I line this up in here correctly. Ow, hit my finger. Aw. Oh, dang it. This up in there. Pull this all the way back so you can see where it is. Push this in there. Alright, we got this in there locked in right. God, man, come on. It's taking so long. There we go. I gotta not be looking what I'm doing. I need to pay attention. Alright, so I got that in. Next is to put this inside here. Shim it out here. Get this here. Lock that on. Check to make sure the gears, or excuse me, the wiring is good. Wiring's in good condition. Lock this in. It's too far up. There we go. All right. Are we zoomed in? Why is the camera? The camera seems like it's zoomed in. I thought it was zoomed in. All right. There we go, guys. Everything's working fine. Make sure I can lock it. Sure can. It's all set now to run it. Full auto, and then I just put the top back on, and we're perfect. Just need a battery that's working. All right, let's try this again. You gotta be kidding me how powerful this thing sounds now. This thing sounds like it'll freaking kill you. And that's how you do it, guys. Now I just untwist this a little bit. Put this back on. Put this here. And make sure. this back on, put this in, and there we go, ready to hit the field, no problems, no worries, um, probably sh probably will be a incident with that metal piston head eventually, probably slammed in there so hard, I mean it sounds like it hits hard, but it's probably got a higher FPS, so catch you guys later, showed you how to 
work on the compression, showed you I know how to work on guns, and damn, this thing's going to kick some ass on the field. It's too bad I'm not using it, huh? <laughs> this thing looks sweet. I'll catch you guys later. Out with a fist.